Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. Today, I thought we'd do something different. We're going to go over a diagnostic blood screen that I did on a chap last week. So as you guys may know, we do offer blood tests for screening purposes. And we obviously monitor guys on testosterone replacement therapy to ensure continued safe and effective prescribing of TRT. Testosterone replacement therapy should be in your best interest and it should be a diagnosis of exclusion. You should be doing everything that you can do to not need TRT. But if you clinically need TRT, it can be absolutely transformatory. But it's just the foundation. But it can be the necessary catalyst to effect a positive change to your life. To do what? Yeah, go earn your reward. So let's go over this guy's bloods. We're actually just going to concentrate on his endocrinology because obviously that's the primary thing that we address here. But no, we need a considered approach. So we look at everything else. But there wasn't really anything on this blood profile to talk about. So we're going to go over his luteinizing hormone and his follicle stimulating hormone because these are the two hormones that send signals down to the testicles luteinizing hormone is the primary hormone that tells the testicles to produce testosterone there are also lh receptors in the brain so cognitive function and libido should be enhanced with luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone this is the primary hormone that tells the testicles to produce sperm now it's more complicated than that because they're both involved but Primarily, that's all you need to know. So this guy's luteinizing hormone is elevated. Now, weirdly, the reference range for luteinizing hormone has decreased. Again, likely reflecting a sick society. And a reference range is just a sample population of people in the current time. Now, we are sicker. So does that mean luteinizing hormone should be higher? Mm, possibly. So this guy has an elevated luteinizing hormone. 11.8 so just above the normal range does that mean that he's definitely got a primary problem no because lh and fsh can fluctuate but it sends the spidey senses tingling so what else it moves down to 17 beta estradiol now this is elevated at 184 now does that mean oh my god this guy's got high estradiol well it can do but the current testing methodology isn't particularly specific, so it can overread. But again, what might be going on? Has this guy got elevated estradiol as a result of being a chunky monkey, drinking too much? Again, numerous things can cause elevated estradiol. Sex hormone binding globulin, as you guys know, my favourite glycoprotein. It's normal, 37. So again... If it was low, you'd be thinking about a metabolic syndrome, hypothyroidism, or sometimes low because testosterone is low, or elevated because of hyperthyroidism, liver dysregulation, super stress states. So yeah, then it comes down to the nitty gritty of why we're talking about this guy. Prolactin, 1626. It's in its thousands with the higher part of the reference range being 324. Alarm bells immediately strike. Do they? Okay, so this guy obviously did Dr. Google and is obviously very worried that he's got a tumour. Now, we do get a little bit twitchy when it's in its thousands. But number one, let's take a step back and have a considered approach because we need a considered approach. So what could be elevating his prolactin? Now, number one, Obviously, this needs to be repeated because prolactin is a super reactive hormone and it can go up in stress states. It can sometimes overread if you have something called macroprolactinemia. Now, that's a, a big prolactin protein. So do not panic with one abnormal result. So this guy is going to go to his GP and have his prolactin repeated with macroprolactin. So again, this can artificially elevate your prolactin level. Now, obviously, we do a history as well. So if you're thinking about a space-occupying lesion, you're going to ask about dizziness, visual disturbance, and headaches. And this guy had none of those. And if we're thinking about a space-occupying lesion, what would then happen? Well, it'd be pressing on the rest of the pituitary. So it tends to cause a low LH and FSH, not an elevated LH and FSH. 
So again, super interesting. So nothing's actually ringing alarm bells here. But this 100% does need following up because we obviously don't want to miss a pathology. So it's likely that the GP is going to obviously do the same things that we've just spoken about, prolactin, macroprolactin. And if it comes back abnormal again, he's likely going to refer him for an MRI brain to have a look to see if he's got a prolactinomia. But it's unlikely because of all the things that we've just spoken about. So again, how important is it to have a considered approach? Talk to the patient, look at all the other parameters that might be influencing prolactin or anything that's erroneous on a blood test report. And we've obviously go to Dr. Google and our brains will always think the worst. So you can go to a online pathology service, you can go to a non-doctor led clinic, but you're not gonna get a considered balanced opinion because they don't have the clinical expertise uh, and emotional intelligence to effectively advise somebody of the facts. And again, we never speak in closed sentences or closed statements because it's unprofessional. So again, this guy does need to be followed up, but 100% does not need to panic at this stage. He never needs to panic because panic's not gonna help him anyway. So have a considered approach to your health, a holistic approach. And if you're gonna get blood screening, get blood screening done through like a clinic like mine, because you're gonna only receive advice from a clinician. And I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm not trying to tell you testosterone is in your best interests, if it's not. So then it gets down to the nitty gritty, obviously testosterone. What's this guy's testosterone with this elevated LH and raised estradiol, which would be thinking, oh yeah, low, low testosterone, elevated prolactin, if it's a prolactinoma. God, this guy's definitely got low testosterone. Well, no, he hasn't. He's got a total testosterone of 26.3. So perfect. He's got a free testosterone of 0.5. Again, perfect. So why did this guy get a blood test? Well, actually, it was just for screening purposes. Now, if you're going to get negative symptoms of raised prolactin, there are going to be lethargy, erectile dysfunction, low libido. So again, you must have a considered approach to you because you're in charge. Place your trust in somebody that knows what they're doing. Have a good day, guys, and do what? Yeah, go earn your reward.